All right, welcome everyone. This is the first week for the Americas cohort of the R for Data Science Book Club. Um, this is the book that started the Slack group and all of that. Um, my name is Luke Morris. Right now, I work as a data analyst at Cedar sinai Hospital, which is in, here in Los Angeles. And I basically use our daily, most of the tidyverse, in what I'm doing as far as, you know, wrangling my data and visualizing things, although we tend to use Tableau for visualizing um, as far as, you know, by the time we put it up to senior level people. But it's just kind of one of those I've always wanted to get farther into learning more about R since I started in grad school two years ago about now. And so I'm just going to go ahead and kick off the book club. Um, first off, we'll get to a little bit of our house cleaning as we look into the session, um, look into the introduction. Um, every, every week we'll be covering a different chapter um, and the meetings are going to be just like they are this one, Friday, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Um, luckily, we're, the plan is to have sessions recorded. Um, and also, there's going to be a GitHub page, which I need to link out on these slides later, where um, we're going to be posting the slides from every presentation as well. So it's no pressure if you can't make it at the um, live time on Friday. I, I know what a busy life is like, and let's not, you know, pin people into having to be somewhere on Friday. Um, one other thing is we're all learners here, and there's going to be plenty in this book that I'm not familiar with. There's going to be plenty in this book that maybe you're not familiar with. But if you are up for presenting any week, let me know, because otherwise you're going to be dealing with a lot of me, and you can already tell I'm a giant stutter source. So... I just want to kind of get a quick idea. A lot of what's on these slides this week, there's not, there's not really much code we're doing, but we're kind of getting over the concepts of what we're going to see in this book. And there's a lot of block quotes in here because there's actually a lot of good stuff in the first two chapters, which is what I'm covering tonight. Um, so basically, this kind of explains, you know, why we're going through some of the stuff that we are as opposed to just doing all the pretty stuff and then leaving it there. So it says, you'll learn how to get your data into R, get it into the most useful structure, transform it, visualize it, and model it. Just as a chemist would learn to clean test tubes, stock a lab, you'll learn how to clean data and draw plots and many other things besides. So that kind of gives you an idea of a lot of the side things that we have to do in order to get to what we want in the end with our data science. So a lot of steps in that. And this, the data science project model, which you'll see in the first chapter of the book, is actually a pretty solid model. And I know that I actually follow it in my day-to-day -day work. Um, what you see here is this first step we're importing, which is basically getting your data into R. Because obviously, if you don't have it in R, then you're not going to be able to do things with it. And then the next step that you see there is that we're tidying it so that everything is in a consistent form. And it's just a matter of, all right, now that everything is consistent, I can compare apples to apples. And the next bit is kind of pointing out what's a bit, bit of an iterative process. And that's transforming, visualizing, and modeling. And that kind of, it goes around and you kind of learn from each different step. And then you, a lot of times you'll transform your data like you'll make new you'll make new variables out of the variables that exist. Like, you know, instead of, if you've got health numbers and you've got population, you throw those together and you can have, you know, per capita data. So that would, that would be an example of transforming data. And then visualization is probably a lot of what you see, at least on um, our Twitter, especially with the Tidy Tuesday folks, is data visualization. And they're doing a lot of ggplot. And also, like, the people who are really awesome at it do DG Animate, DG Image, and all the other things that I'm yet to learn. Um, and then there's modeling, which is what a lot of people think of when it comes into the data science -y part of this data science book. 
and that is trying to essentially solve your problem and then and kind of come up with a formula that explains what you're what you're seeing but on top of that once we go through that iterative process again and again and again we come out on the other end and the almost one of the most important things is being able to communicate data and it's kind of one of those situations where it's great that you can create an amazing visualization, you can create an amazing model, but if you can't tell people what on earth it's doing or you know what what they're supposed to be learning from it, it's worthless. So I mean each each step here has its own value and you kind of have to figure out, you know, there's a lot of places where you can specialize. I know that Believe it or not, I actually specialize in the communication side of it. So there's a lot of times where on top of, you know, putting together, together everything, the one thing where I really shine is like I can say, okay, well, here's what I made, here's what I put together, here's what it means for us. And let's, you know, see if we can improve on our turnaround times or, you know, see if we can do something else in triage. Right. Here's another quote that kind of got me from the start of the book. You don't need to be an expert programmer to be a data scientist. But becoming a better programmer allows you to automate common tasks and solve new problems with greater ease. So one of the things that I saw, I don't remember who was presenting at our studio conference, um, who was giving this talk, but I mean, there's a lot of imposter syndrome that comes into dealing with um, data science right now. And I mean, everybody thinks that their code sucks. I think my code sucks, but it's just, does it do what you want? Then be happy with it. You can make it prettier some other day, but as long as it's doing what you're asking of it, it's worth being proud of. Like there's no shame in I had to go the long way around to do this. I mean, maybe farther down the line, you'll find a better way to do it and that's perfect too. But just like, don't be ashamed. Everybody learns. And that's why we're here. One of the concepts that they kind of follow in this book is called the 80-20 rule, which in my experience some is pretty accurate. So what they're trying to say is that you can tackle about 80% of any project that you're working on with the tools that you'll learn in this book. But for the remaining 20% of the work, you'll have to discover, you know, some kind of task relevant packages that you'll need to educate yourself on. So for me, one of them is Lubridate, which deals with a lot of um, reformatting of dates. Um, I'm also a college basketball nerd and there is a NCAA Hoop R package, which I use to look at college basketball data back when we had sports ball. I missed that. And a lot of what you'll have to do, you know, outside when you start looking at the, the other packages is just figuring out how to read documentation on these R packages. And my advice, just from what I have had to do it a few times, find something you're passionate about. For me, it was that college basketball package. And that's what got me to look enough into the documentation to figure out how to read documentation to learn a completely new tool. All right, one of the things that we also see from the authors is that they, they know you're gonna be tempted to skip the exercises, but they say there's no better way to learn than practicing on real problems. And as somebody who like, you know, started attending every MOOC under the sun before I finally, you know, went back and got my degree in data analytics, it was kind of one of those, yeah, I was the person who was skipping the problems every time and just hoping that the lectures sunk in and no, it was a matter of I had to go somewhere and actually be doing the work for it to catch on. Yeah, which makes sense because you have to work with the packages to understand what the heck it is that you're learning and for it to actually stick with you. I mean, that's the reason a lot of people take notes in like any lecture. It's once you commit it to paper, you remember committing it to the paper. Of course, as you're trying to do a lot of these problems, you're going to 
run across things that you just are struggling and struggling with. And luckily there is somebody who put together a sort of an answer key and he has it basically mirroring the book. And there's a link to that that'll be in the slides. But I, I encourage you to look at that if you get stuck after trying. But seriously, you will learn more if you give it your own shot first. Otherwise, you're just like cycling through something really quick to be done with it, and you're not going to learn anything. Um, one thing to remember about going through this is, a, well, the benefit of a group. You're not alone. If you get confused by an error receive that you've received, chances are, like the chance, the idea that you are the only person who's ever gotten this error is almost zero. So one thing I like to do and is pretty common advice is Google the error message. And inevitably there will be at least a couple posts that are, you know, people who got this exact same message and you just kind of run through all the answers and be like, okay, well, what kind of works for me here? And a lot of those will point out to Stack Overflow. And another place that I like to look for um, information, especially with R, is community.rstudio.com because they're a little less rigid than Stack Overflow, where they're kind of snooty if you don't do things their way. And the other place that you can ask things is actually this Slack community, the r ds Slack. I know that I had to use it a couple times when I was working on my, um, grad, my grad school projects, and I, I know I was saved by Joan McGee. I know I was saved by Ken Johnson once. So it's one of those don't be afraid to ask. It's, it can feel awkward, especially if you're shy, but it's what it's there for. All right, so basically the only homework we have for this week is if stuff that you possibly already did already. And that is installing R and installing R Studio. Um, and then from there, you have to install the tidyverse and install a few complementary packages that we'll be using along with the tidyverse. And if anybody ha is having problems with that, I can stay on a Slack call after our bit of discussion here and um, walk you through that. But I think for now, we're just gonna move on to any bit of discussion. And um, next week we'll be tackling visualization. So does anybody else have anything that kind of stuck out to them in these first couple chapters? Hey, it's uh, Eric here. Um, nice to meet everybody. Hopefully everyone will speak up and introduce themselves. I'm particularly interested not only in this book, but in uh, having a community of our users that I can uh, collaborate with and learn from. Um, so super excited about this. And uh, my takeaway from the first chapter is the uh, exploratory versus confirmatory um, difference he makes. I particularly like that idea. Um, I've already read the book, but I'm looking to go through it again in a lot more detail. Um, if you've read it before, you'll find that going back in, there's Oh, we saw, I mean, he just covers everything. It's uh, pretty comprehensive. It's, it like feels like a beginner's book, but it's just depends on what stage you're in because it will, there'll be something that resonates with you no matter your experience. And I'm not that experience. I've only been using R for a year and a half. Thanks for sharing. Um, I mean, I was in that boat not too long. I've, I haven't even completely gotten through the book. I've picked it up and dropped it when, you know, there was a relevant chapter at times, so that this is going to be exciting for me, just actually getting through the entire thing. And I mean, my day-to-day -day job has become more of the descriptive analytics as opposed to a lot of the predictive and prescriptive. So kind of going back through modeling is almost going to be a giant refresh for me because I really haven't used it since school. Hey, this is Michael. Um, I, I've had the book for, well, coworker gave it to me. I've been using R kind of off and on for a little bit. 
Um, I come from a Tableau background as well, a lot of SQL, um, but just been, it, it's kind of funny at work. Um, it's a lot of Python, Python people, um, but, and then we use, we have a lot of Python scripts, but I, a coworker and I kind of, we, we kind of just have synced over R and I don't know, I just kind of gravitate towards it. I just have been able to pick it up a little bit easier. It just reads more natural than um, at least tidyverse um, for me a lot more than, than pandas. But um, so I've had this book for a while and I, I kind of jump around um, and just try to fit it into my workflow. But um, as far as the first chapter, um, I was actually surprised that he started with visualization. I'm, I, I love visualization because it just, that creative um, side gets to come out. Um, but I was surprised because it seems like visualization tends to get like the, the final touch or kind of the last mile um, uh, kind of mentality or that's kind of the stigma. Um, so I thought it was cool that, um, that he stressed that and that really iterating over like, okay, you, you clean your data, you do something with it and you, and that's what makes ggplot awesome too, is that you can just really quickly, um, prep clean and, um, and then see what's going on or see what changed. And, um, depending on the project, I mean, it, Tableau is great, but, you know, for that final kind of, um, like you were saying, Luke, to, to present to certain people, but when you're in the thick of it, um, it's kind of nice to stay in that one, that one ecosystem. So, um, I was happy to see him start with, with visualization. So. Yeah. And it's almost kind of, it's kind of, you know, it gives you that dopamine hit to kind of keep you going with the book. So I yeah. mean, there's definitely a reason for it. Uh huh. Totally. Um, hi there. Uh, my name's Katie. Uh, I joined this group just so um, I would be motivated to finish this book from start to end. Um, I'm a statistics graduate student, so I've used a chapter or two um, from time to time, but I've never formally sat down and read through it. So hopefully doing this will keep you motivated. Thanks. Yeah, sound, it sounds like a common, you know, situation that's gone on in here. So like I said, we're all learning together. Hi, this is Sylvia. Um, like, I think it was Katie who just went. Like Katie, I'm also interested in having structure around getting through the whole book. Um, I actually just purchased it not too long ago, but I've been using R for a couple of years. And I've definitely been learning things as I've needed them for the position that I started. And I also work with health data. Um, and yeah, I think I'm looking forward to going through it in this kind of structured way because I I know that there's not like a strong foundation that I'm working from. And so things like visualization where I have to figure out what goes inside the aesthetics function versus outside, like that stuff trips me up all the time. There's just certain things that I feel like I always have to look up. And so I'm hoping that going through the book will help solidify some of that stuff. Yeah. The that's something that I know from my own experience, I have problems remembering whether or not something goes in the aesthetic as well. But I think actually rereading chapter three, um, it kind of stuck a little bit more. So hopefully when we go over it next week, that we'll have something that helps us, you know, hold on to it a little bit better. But if, anybody, if anybody else has anything to add, go ahead. Otherwise, I 
we'll probably just go ahead and um, cut this off for now. And I'll keep uh, I'll keep open on Slack just if anybody has any questions they want to ask, but maybe not in a public forum. Um, other than that, I'll just be kind of in and out of my office for the night. And I, I will. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I have a quick clarifying question, Luke, for you. So mm -hmm. in at least in the version of the book that I'm looking at, chapter three is the visualization one. Data mm -hmm. or sorry, chapter three is data transformation. Is that what you have on your schedule also for this book club? Um, I'm looking at the online version. I had data visualization, but oh, okay. If if you want to, because I know you were talking about presenting chapter three, and would you want to make would you want to make that whatever? I think we're going by what it is online. To my that makes knowledge, sense. so would were you were you wanting to handle chapter five instead of chapter? Three, well, that whichever one is data transformation. Um, yeah, if you wouldn't mind, is that okay? Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Okay. Yay, tiny humans! <laughs> How did I unmute myself? Whoops. There we go. I hear you now. No, I had I accidentally unmuted myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and shut down for the night. Like I said, if we're all learning here, so don't be afraid to go ahead and offer to present a chapter because you really don't want to listen to me all the time. I don't even want to listen to myself all the time. So um, if you have any further questions, get at me in the Slack and I'll be around and try to help you out. So everybody take care until next week. Thanks, Luke. Yep. Appreciate it. Thanks, Luke. Thank you. See you guys and gals. Bye. Oh, there were chat messages in here. Oops.